how leadership applied the corporate environment uh, or just in business in general, right? How managers must use different leadership uh, styles depending on the situation that they are facing. Uh, the model allows you to analyze the needs of the situation that you are in and then use the most appropriate leadership style you know, that's given. When it comes to situational leadership, one thing that sticks out to me personally that I don't have any military experience, by the way, but I've been trained um, many decades now in multifaceted self-defense or other training by military personnel and also by first responders. Uh, all right, right. So, so we continue on. From all these years, if not decades, of um, all of these training space, seasoned military and also first responders, I, I want to say that we civilians can certainly adopt some of these uh, principles, right? So what are the principles of situational leadership according to Patton, John Patton? Uh, Patton applied this approach to his leadership style um, and also embodying many of the most important principles of this um, situational leadership. Some of his most important pieces of advice were to use cooperation uh, as well as also collaboration to lead a team and earn the team's trust by positive motivation and to always be flexible with different groups. So some of the general patterns, core principles of leadership include the following. Be flexible with your approach to different situations. Uh, use cooperation and collaboration as the tools for leadership and er earn their respect and trust of your team by motivating them with positivity um, and set an example with your own actions. Now, with me, there are six examples of situational leadership. There are six examples that I want to share with you in situational leadership. Modern businesses are complex organizations composed of different teams from different backgrounds. Dealing with this diverse group sometimes means switching up your leadership uh, approach with employees of so many different various skill levels. That is why so many businesses leaders are embracing situational leadership as a management style. Situational leadership takes some of the approaches we are familiar with, such as authoritative or delegative, and then identifies the groups with which those styles will find the most success. All of this may sound a little complex, but to help clear things up, we have put together six examples of the situational leadership to illustrate how this strategy works in the real world. Okay. First off, what is situational leadership? Back in 1969, Ken Blanchard and Paul Hershey's management of organizational behavior established this adaptive leadership tenets that would become known as situational leadership. The core concept of the book was that no one's style of leadership was always correct. There's always going to be something in there, right? Instead, the book argued that assessing the leader's personal characteristics alongside the capabilities of the team was also crucial. Well, there is some intricate intricate classification um, used by Blanchard and Hershey to determine when different styles were most appropriate. Uh, it comes down that the leaders closing the, between four management styles, okay? They are one, telling the most autocratic of the styles. This works best when a manager needs to get the best results from a group with a lesser skill set. Commonly seen in military situations, telling helps leaders with more experience to manage new team members. Second, selling. The style of management puts the leader in more coaching role rather than a directing one. The leader's job is to make sure tasks go to the best suited to the job while providing advice and experience. Sport organizations commonly use this style. The third one is participating. Participating is a democratic approach to the management style. This style is best for teams uh, with such high skill sets, right? Here, the leaders uh, provides more feedback than just a guidance. Uh, teams of uh, junior managers may need to stop the leadership more than the others. Uh, and this was participating style, okay? The next one is delegating. Delegating is as the most hands-off, we always call it laissez-faire in French, of the four styles. Delegating um, fits the subordinates with high-level skills as well, skill levels as well. Here, um, 
is where the leader oversees while making sure things go according to plan. This approach is ideal when working with senior staff. With some idea of how situational works, let's read some of the examples how real-time leaders, and some of them, you, know, you guys are probably going to know, they have used these strategies in the past. Okay, some examples of situational leaders. Steve Jobs, Apple. Apple owes its massive success to the influence of its famous, famous leader, Steve Jobs. While most people associate Jobs with the authoritative telling leadership style, telling, right? His approach was actually much more news, nuanced than many realize. Jobs' famous product launches were not only a way to get consumers excited about new products, these launches were also a method for Jobs to sell his vision to his employees. So telling, Jobs had a unique way of motivating teams to pursue ideas that were unpopular internally. Again, this is for his internal you know, organization, employees, right, to his people, despite the massive success they would eventually meet. And Jobs, Steve Jobs, was also capable of using delegative approach to his leadership style. Jobs... Um, also wanted to hire the best people in all areas in his organization, in his business he was not necessarily familiar with. And that's a plus. He did this with the hope that they would uh, be able to create success even without his direct intervention, which is a great leadership, by the way, uh, style. As with his massive success in founding the Pixar movie studio, as we all already know about that too. Next leader is Colin Powell. The former United States Secretary of State, a four-star general, had an exceptional career in which he interacted with a vast variety of leaders, including Richard Nixon and Michael Gorbachev. Right? Throughout that career, he worked with a wide variety of teams, from units of soldiers to teams to statesmen. Right? In an, All right, in an interview with Forbes, uh, Colin Powell stated that situational leadership was the key to managing different teams. He even elaborated saying, I adjust my style within limits to the strengths and weaknesses of my subordinates so that I understand what they can and cannot do. This is what Powell knew the importance of identifying weaknesses and taking advantage of individual strengths to help teams find success no matter what the environment is, right? And throughout his career, he did this with lives on the line, making decisions whose consequences echoed across the world. The next one that I want to share with you guys is Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson's as um, in the NBA world, right, um, as the most successful coach in NBA, uh, National Basketball Association. Phil Jackson has won 11 championships. The successful teams he led include international superstars, including Michael Jordan, O'Neill, Shaquille O'Neill, Kobe Bryant. So when dealing with these high level talents, uh, a different leadership approach gives, uh, gives team, you know, gives team uh, members the latitude, the latitude they need while um, still making decisions that drive success, right? To do this, Jackson needed to be supportive of any players, right, of these players, while still giving them clear direction, the roadmap um, to what, you know, the goals are. Um, so Jackson's situational leadership skills are evident when looking at his approach to coaching. Uh, some of the greatest stars that we all know of, Michael Jordan is known to be hardworking, dedicated to a um, dedicated team member, meaning that Jackson took a delegative leadership approach with him. However, Shaquille O'Neal, was uh, already an established star with a middling commitment to his team when joined the Lakers, right? Meaning that a participatory management approach was also more appropriate. The next one is my favorite, as always, George Patton, <laughs> as one of the most famous leaders of the Second World War, World War II, uh, General George Patton has become an almost mythical figure. Uh, popular culture ima image Imagines him as a hardline leader and relentlessly pushing his troops toward, you know, like, towards victory. Hardcore. However, this idea is not entirely accurate. Pan was not only a successful military leader, but an excellent analyst who produced several essays on war strategies, on leadership. The most important idea which derived from these papers and one that would form a foundation of military 
readiness in the coming decades was that to win a conflict, an organization must always analyze the situation and adapt. Analyze the situation and adapt. Patton applied this approach to his leadership style, embodying many of the most important principles of situational leadership. As you already know, I'm very passionate about situational awareness and the leadership within that too. So some of his most important pieces um, of advice, as I already mentioned earlier, is um, where the use of cooperation and collaboration to lead a team and also earn the team's trust, respect and trust by positive motivation and to always be flexible with any given different groups that you work with. Uh, the next one is John Wooden, okay? Another example of the value of situational leadership comes again from the sports world. It is so atle athletic, athletic world, yeah. This time the arena is college level basketball, right? During his time as head coach of UCLA, John Wooden won 10, 10 championships. Seven of those championships were consecutive the longest winning streak in NCAA history. One of the challenges of coaching a team at the college level as opposed to the professional level environment is that the team is constantly changing, right? Year by year, key players left and reassessment of both tactical and leadership strategies become so necessary. To lead his team at the high level of success that wouldn't achieve, he needed to constantly, constantly evaluate how his team worked together he identified not only the most successful players, but also how the weaker ones needed his support. Now, this leadership and the success it brought the team was only possible through situational approach. Next one. All right. Next one is Jack Stahl. As a president of Coca-Cola from 1978 to 2000, Jack Stahl was tasked with leading a successful organization and ensuring that it stayed there at the top. In an interview discussing his leadership priorities, Stahl said that the, he viewed the best leaders as situational, able to approach circumstances and determine the level of involvement needed from them. Stahl even says that he learned this from an issue that had occurred early in his career. Asked to prepare a prospect for a public offering, Stahl delegated the project without correctly determining the uh, the, uh, the amount um, of oversight needed. The project failed. And Stahl realized that he needed to know when to dive in and lead. Uh, this sort of active situational leadership is important for leading different teams in the best ways possible. So by engaging with teams and also engaging with individuals uh, and departments as well, you can develop a managerial approach that works, you know, best for each group and elevates the business. Yeah, it's a game there. The new global economy uh, and this with this diverse workforce that comes along with it means that organizational requirements are different in every environment. And it's, you know, you gotta pivot rather quickly here. De developing the ability to uh, pivot, to modify your leadership approach to specific challenge is really an important strength in today's complex business world. So my question, do you have an experience with using situational leadership in your organization? Um, let me know in the comment section below and uh, let's talk about it. Thanks so much for listening.